Once again, I was lucky enough to attend the Cannes Film Festival this year, and unlike last year, I had the good fortune to stay through the entire event. As you can probably guess, I saw more than my fair share of movies in those 12 days, and after 33 films, 3 short films, and a much needed vacation, the time has finally come for me to tell you all about them. That's right, each and every one. There were a few major blind spots I just couldn't fill in no matter how hard I tried, but I still got to see a good sampling of this year's most talked about titles, including the entire competition lineup, and even some of the more obscure ones. So now it's time to lay it all out on the table and check in on how 2023 is doing so far. This year's Can Quest will be divided between videos based on the different sections of the festival. And rather than giving in-depth reviews on all these movies, since I can't put up 36 reviews worth of video content in a timely fashion, this series will serve as more of a bite-sized discussion on each of the films to give an idea of how Can felt as a whole in 2023. For my in-depth thoughts, you can always check my full reviews on Letterboxd, always linked in the description. So without further ado, let's get started with the three short films. The first and probably most anticipated short film I saw in Can was Pedro Almodovar's Strange Way of Life. This is his second English language short film, and there was a lot of buzz going into this one because Ethan Hawke and Pedro Pascal play a couple of gay cowboys. As it stands, the film is a breezy half hour, Hawke and Pascal have some palpable chemistry as these grizzled frontiersmen, and obviously Almodovar mines that sexual tension for all it's worth in his usual pulpy fashion. The melodrama is really played up here, even with how purposefully bare and small scale the film feels, and that's largely thanks to how committed the two leads are to the whole bit. Hawk gives off as much cartoonish gruffness as he can possibly muster, while Pascal is channeling the depths of Almodovar's soapy Spanish roots, but neither one feels so exaggerated that they take you out of the world the director is creating. He seems to be getting much more comfortable with working in the English language, which honestly kind of seems like the whole point of this project. Strange Way of Life ends on a pretty poignant note, but that also means that it ends on a really abrupt note and leaves you wanting a whole lot more. And also, fun facts, this is actually the only film in Cannes that I got to see twice, so my thoughts are pretty well cemented at this point. I don't know how long it's going to take for Almodovar to finally feel ready to make a feature-length film in English, but Strange Way of Life, for a trial run, is at least entertaining while still carrying the soul and personality you'd expect from Pedro. Strange Way of Life gets a 6.5 out of 10. From one Pedro to another, the next short film I saw was Pedro Costa's The Daughters of Fire. Now, I'm going to be really brief with this one because it's only 9 minutes long, but all I'll say is that I'm really not a fan of Costa's plodding, barren style of filmmaking. Of the two films of his I've seen so far, i found them both to be unbearably empty and way too indulgent in their runtimes, so a 9 minute project seemed like the perfect compromise. The Daughters of Fire almost plays like some sort of museum exhibit in the way it's structured, and because of that triptych structure it employs, Costa finds this really effective balance of portraying both chaos and stagnancy all at once. He sort of abandons that in the last minute or so, and I really wasn't a fan of that shift, but for what we got, The Daughters of Fire is definitely a project worth checking out if you're into that more experimental, exhibitionist style of filmmaking. And even if you're not, it's short enough that you can take the gamble anyway. 7 out of 10, but again, I don't really know if 9 minutes are all that worth rating in the first place. The last short film I saw was Jean-Luc Godard's posthumous release, trailer of the film that will never exist, Phony Wars. If that title doesn't tell you how pretentious this is going to be, then literally anything Godard has made after his first 6 or 7 films should give you more than enough indication. Now, Godard was an extremely polarizing figure in cinema, especially later in his life, so wherever you land on his late stage output will probably indicate how much investment you'll find in Phony Wars. I personally think his last two films were borderline insulting wastes of time, but with just 20 minutes and the fact that this was a posthumous release, I'll admit my curiosity was piqued. Unfortunately, Phony Wars feels like just about every other one of Godard's collages disguised as a film. This one goes the extra mile by not even incorporating any moving images, save for a single segment that I'm pretty sure is lifted straight out of one of Godard's other films. But oh, dear viewer, la jete this saint. It's called a trailer, but this plays far more like a scrapbooked storyboard with some disjointed voiceover, and the fact that this was released after this death makes it hard to believe that Godard actually had any involvement in this thing, if not for two factors. A, he contributes some of the voiceover himself, as if Saint Laurent, who funded the project, all but begged him to leave behind some trace of his actual involvement, and B, it's just as insufferable as most of Godard's other late period work. So yeah, I'm not a fan of this one. Do I feel sorry for shitting on the work of the recently deceased? 
In this case, I doubt Godard would care. He'd probably even welcome it at this point. 3 out of 10 for Phony Wars. Okay, so that'll do it for the first video of the 2023 CanQuest. Up next, I'll post about the special screenings and out of competition titles I saw, so stay tuned for that. Until then, have a great day, stay safe, and as always, I'll see you when I see ya.